Four to 48 hours, because I know we'll have folks out there requesting the recording. Can y'all hear us all right? It's supposed to be coming through those speakers, but can you, Helen? Yes, sir. I talk too loud as it is. Oh, Bob, Bob, Bob. What are we going to do, Bob? I told him to behave. I know. I didn't expect him <laughs> to. All right. Can we actually turn up the speakers for us? Let's see what happens, and y'all let us know. The way I talk, it'll start screaming. Yeah, because it gets, yeah, it gets too damn loud. Don't mean to, it just happens. And I guess you two, and you're so soft-spoken, you probably don't have to really lean into that mic if you talk at all. I'll put my principal's voice on. It'll yeah. carry. We don't have to worry about you. It'll carry. All right, Alan, how's that back there? Is that better? Jeff, all right. All right, let's see here. I don't show exactly six o'clock yet, so let's give it time. All right, I show that it is 6 p.m. We'll bring this uh, special session, which is a public hearing of Simville County Commissioner's Court to order. Let the record show that Jeff Harris, Richard Talavera, Danny Chambers, Tammy Ray, and Wade Bush are all here. We are in a discussion with the hospital board. Ron, I'll leave it to you to call your group to order. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it's also 6 o'clock. Today is Tuesday, March 28, 2023. Uh, we're in the district courtroom of the Somerville County Courthouse. I'll call this meeting to order of the Somerville County Hospital District Board. Let the record show that we do have all members of the board present and we are here for a meeting with Somerville County Commissioner's Court to discuss transfer of Glen Rose Medical Center patients by the Somerville County Fire Department. And so everybody out there in this whole group knows uh, we've had s several small meetings over the course of 14, 13, 15 months. If I say anything wrong, Michael, jump in here and let me know what I say wrong. But as we're all aware, before the court can make any decisions and go forward with anything, the whole group needs to hear it as a whole, what they can vote on and can't vote on. Because you well know if we have two or more, uh, we get three in the room, then we get in trouble real quick. So there's been many, many discussions. I know it's been back and forth. Uh, and Ron, you correct me if I'm wrong. I know in some of the meetings, I wasn't always there with you. I think, you know, the county supposedly had talked about supplying ambulance at one time. The county had talked about supplying a uh, uh, driver and ambulance, things like that. But it's just been all discussion up until we get the whole court. And I think Michael's got a presentation that he would like to make to both sides and that uh, may go over many items I think Michael feels like we might could be able to do what is requested by the hospital with our current staffing and equipment, things like that. But at this time, Michael, if you're ready, are you ready? Are you good? With I'm, I'm fine with that, Judge. Thank you. Uh, well, that, that'll come on public. Uh, and if we don't mind, and I, I know y'all will be, let's just be respectful of him while he's talking, and then y'all have your chance to rebut any issues that you feel like may need to be addressed. Is that fair? Thank you. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. So, Michael, you've got the floor. So, okay. so as Jim said, we've had probably a little over a year we've been working on, on having meetings to resolve this issue. Uh, Started out kind of during the middle of COVID and has been since on patient transfer. Uh, the last meeting we had was on March 14th. Uh, the takeaway, uh, that was kind of the point that we were looking for some resolution to this. We, so the the takeaway resolution from that meeting was that EMS or Summerville County EMS would need nine additional personnel. Uh, to be able to fund to do transfer to Blue Rose Medical Center. So they you know, could take to the court the uh, request for nine additional people. So that led me, uh, I'm a numbers person in analytics. So I went and pulled the budget off the Treasury of the County website uh, of kind of what the staffing arrangements are now. And, and some of these are assumptions and correct me in these. Uh, but this is the budget off the website. 
I assume since we were requesting nine new additional people that the current budget status has been met, that there wasn't room in the current budget to accommodate any of those nine people. So that's an assumption on my part. So I pulled off of the, the county records November 22nd, or 2022 to February of 23. Uh, EMS has averaged 1.9 calls a day. Uh, on the fire side, they've averaged 0.17 calls per day. And the rest of these calculations are just how I got to where where I got. It's basically FTE or full-time equivalent. So that's one individual 40 hours a week uh, full-time. So that's kind of what leads to the next one. Scenario one, a lot of times we're told there's only one crew available at the station. Uh, so what I did is just back the budget into if we've got the fire chief who's listed out separately in the budget. Uh, we have clerks. I'm assuming that's two individuals. Uh, that's an annual budget of, of 105425 which comes out to about $52,000 uh, for each one of the clerks that are at the station. And two paramedics. If that's the case, I'm assuming one crew is typically two paramedics uh, or a combination thereof. Uh, if we only have one crew at the station, we would be paying that crew $151,000 what the budget if you extrapolate that out so that's 24 hour coverage with two paramedics uh, which I don't think is the case so I kind of saying the question is you know is that truly what we're paying which I don't think we are uh, scenario number two is that we're we got two crew at the two crews on uh, that would be a chief you've got your two clerks as I understand are certified either EM, EMT or paramedic uh, so they do have some sort of certification and can run a call on an ambulance same thing there it's you know 52,000 a piece there if we're doing four paramedics that comes out to about 74,000 uh, per paramedic that's on that would give you seven crew members during the day from Monday through Friday 8 to 5 roughly and four crew members after hours um, and with that just kind of some of the questions that come to my mind in, in analyzing this. Uh, the, the pay is kind of in question uh, at 77000 thousand. That would be a little high. I know, you know, I, I will say EMS is just like healthcare right now and we're having to pay more for all positions actually. Uh, but with seven crew members there during the day from eight to five, the question is, is why can't we we do transfers at least eight to five or offer to do so to date we've had no real offer to do any transfers it's, it's unless they're i guess critical you know, careful i can't fly uh, you know it's two two people per truck you got seven people there you only have three trucks so that would leave if all three of them calls that would leave one person at the station uh at the same time not long ago I, i'll give a little background too because i'm I've done EMS, I've actually been an EMT for, I guess, 20 going on 30 years now. Uh, and I, up until recently, still do EMS and fire. Uh, as I've gotten busier as the CEO of the hospital, I don't do it so much. But uh, I, I've worked the box since I was 18 years old. So, uh, But Hood County EMS put this ad out on Facebook here a while back, and they're hiring paramedics for 54000 to 65000 uh, with a $3,000 sign-on bonus. Currently, Hood County is who's doing our transfers. They're able to staff an extra truck and provide a truck to some of County to do the transfers for some of County. So that tells me that they're able to staff at that pay rate. Uh, scenario number two is three crew members, uh, or three crews, sorry. Uh, again, your chief, your, your two clerks, uh, and that would be six paramedics around the clock. That comes out to about $49,000. That's probably more in the, the more realistic range if you've got a mix of EMTs and paramedics. It's probably a little bit higher than that, but that's just, I, I just kind of did the numbers uh, in the different staffing scenarios to see kind of where we, with the budget that's in place, where we are. That would give you nine crew members, uh, eight to five. It would give you six crew members after hours. Some of the other questions, I guess, 
just from my management side looking at it, we're paying clerical, two clerical positions that are making almost as much as the paramedics are making in the county. Uh, yeah. With 1.9 calls a day and one fire call a week. But there's more. I mean, I'm, I'm making the substance there. I don't know what all these people do, so I can't really speak to that. But with six crew on at night, that would give us enough to staff all three ambulances. If one's on auto transfer, you still got two ambulances available in house uh, to do the calls. And then just some generalizations as, as we've gone through this. Uh, 2019, Somerville County EMS was doing all the transfers to the hospital. Uh, from 2019 to 2023, the budget, the personnel budget for EMS has increased by 58.84%, but now they're not doing transfers. Uh, potential revenue, we actually pulled the transfers that we have sent from the hospital, looked at the mileage. Uh, we based it off of Medicare flat rate billing and healthcare. Typically, we base anything off of Medicare because there's typically the lowest. Medicaid's the lowest payer, but Medicare is our primary. Uh, pays less than most the commercial. Uh, just estimated in a year, there's been about $279,000 in lost revenue from out to the transfer to the hospital. So this is money that the, uh, the, the EMS could make by doing transfers for us. Uh, there, there is a little bit of question. Currently, the practice, I guess, of the EMS is that they turn it over to collection, or they, they build an insurance company they receive what the insurance company pays, but they do not further collect after that. Uh, this results in loss of revenue, and it, it is a concern because I know in our contracts, that would actually be a violation of our payer contract. And in the case of Medicare, uh, it, it could work on being illegal. Uh, they expect you to collect a deductible amount and or make every best effort to collect that deductible amount. And if you don't, you're actually in violation of the contract. Uh, one of the other issues we face is the delay in transfers is hindering Lindros Medical Center from getting our level four trauma designation. We, we lost several years ago our level four designation. Uh, that's been one of my big pushes to the nursing staff is to get that designation back. So when we have a trauma patient in the ER and the decision is made to transfer that patient, we roughly have 30 minutes from the decision to get that person on an ambulance headed to another location. So when we're having to rely on Hood County to come down and do the transfers, as many of you know, the growth of Hood County is above, probably more so than even in Somerville County right now. So they are, are getting busier. Uh, you know, Con the EMS did our transfers for over 10 years. They ran, I, I was actually part of that back when. Uh, they ran a four-man crew, two boxes. They were able to, there's about 8,000. Back then, there's probably 7,000 people in the Con, but they were able to do all the transfers and cover for pond with two trucks. Uh, if you look at most of the national statistics on rural EMS, uh, it's one truck to about every eight to 12,000 people is kind of the, the standards that, that are out there. Uh, and then Somerville County EMS was actually able to do uh, transfers from 2018 to about 2020. We had no trouble getting patients transferred. Uh, Currently, Hood County is doing our transfers. Uh, they're doing them free of charge. Um, so there's obviously money to be made in transfers if they're sending a truck all the way down to Somerville County to transfer a patient. Uh, and, and I will say we do have an arrangement that we are payer of last resort. So if it's a self-pay patient, we will pay. The hospital will ultimately pay for that bill if they're unable to get any funding. And, and we would do that arrangement with any EMS service that provides. Uh, and as it stands right now with Hood County doing the transfers, Somerville County residents will receive a bill and they will be taken to collections and probably turned over. I don't know if they turn over to the credit bureau or not. Uh, but with them doing the transfers, they will receive a full bill and, and will be actually collected on that bill. So that will change that over to as well. So those are kind of my in review uh, of the budget and my analysis. On the, uh, Michelle and them did some research for me, you know, on that. Of course, right now, Somerville County residents do not go into collections and get billed. And it was like, what, 831 of 09 is when that was taken to Commissioner's Court. And they've got the audio where it does discuss that, you know, outside district is billed, 
inside district at that time. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or legal or legal, illegal. I'm not taking the stance. The commissioner's court at that time chose <laughs> not to push it past the insurance building in 09. Yeah, I, I would just recommend you might want to look at your, your contract. And it could be different with EMS. I just know the hospitals, right. if we don't take it to collections and collect on it, we are actually in violation of that contract and with Medicare it becomes so the reason I brought that up was, as you well know, we just have to go back to the court to discuss how we do that and if they decide to do that, and then we just have to go from there. Because if the previous commissioner's court did make decision that we wouldn't build beyond insurance to local residents. But that can be addressed, we can look at it, we can talk about it see what can or can't be done if it's illegal we need to change it yeah I, i'm I sure we've done a lot of things in the, with the deductibles now and the higher deductibles of like and, and that's what's i will tell you on an ems side that's what's made ems tougher because back when somebody had a two thousand dollar deductible the game i say game but you took them to the er ems waited and held their bill to let the hospital go ahead and bill the deductibles met then the ems would drop their bill and get paid by the insurance in full there you go well now that you're a lot of your deductible plans are like ten thousand right. dollars you can't but the insurance company is expecting you to collect that ten thousand dollars out of pocket before they begin paying right so that's why they require that you've got to make every <coughs> every effort to collect that so it's something that we may have to readdress as the court makes a decision however they want to decide to move forward and i need everybody to know when i'm speaking here john can testify I'm speaking for Danny Chambers, all right? I'm not speaking for this court. I don't make decisions for this court. They got their own vote. So when my loud mouth overloads my butt, don't blame it on these people, okay? It's it's me. So that would have to be readdressed. And I imagine there's some things that he stated that y'all would probably like to rebut. I would imagine. It's up to y'all. Tanner, if you don't want to address it or don't address it or. You start your thing back over. Maybe. What do you know, Eddie? Where did it go? Yeah. Ah, good. Thank you. So, um, let me just address one thing up front. We're not Somerville County EMS. We're Somerville County Fire Department. It takes five people to staff an engine for a structure fire. We have six people on staff. So just to be clear, we're not talking about an ambulance service. Texas EMS has five ambulances in service. They only do ambulance. They only take care of patients. So please do not confuse one thing for the other. The only thing on the, on the table here is, should we do transfers? And it's up to the commissioner's court to make that decision because there is some, some risk that we could have a truck out of town and we, we have a wreck. Uh, this last, past weekend, we had a, two people injured on a motorcycle. That takes two ambulances, four people, and if it was a car, that leaves two people to extricate them. So let's, let's not get bogged down on e looking at just EMS. Let's look at what do we really need to, what really needs to be decided there, and that's who's going to do the hospital transfers. I'm a hos I'm, 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 you know, the doctor's my friend. We do a lot of business together. I, I have no, Michael's my friend. We do a lot of business. I've worked with Ron for a long time. This is not about me against you. It's about the, the hospital needing transfer service and whether or not the county commissioner's court wants to, to take on that responsibility. The billing, we purposely keep our employees out of the billing realm. We give them a parameter. We make sure that they're doing everything that's required to collect what can be collected. <coughs> we pay a billing company to manage that. We don't manage the, the money. We stay out of politics because we want our people, we have half well, mostly uh, half and half volunteers and, and uh, employees here tonight. Not on duty, but here. So we want to just serve the public, and we want to do it right. We had cases during COVID, which is, was a very different era, that 
we were really strapped and you know uh, my wife reminded me this morning that uh, um, I spent a lot of sleepless nights standing by for the ambulances to, to work as a paramedic because that's the only way they could take the transfers we're not in a pandemic anymore but understand just as with the hospital the fire department cannot schedule our 911 calls we would like to we like to be able to you know run a schedule and we do transfers during this time and we do 911 calls during this time we can't do that <coughs> so there's times when six people's not enough that's why we have volunteers to back them up of our volunteers a handful of them do have certifications but they're not there's no, we, we, I have a hard time getting people to volunteer to start with I've been doing this for 36 years I have a lot of vested in in this community in this service and this is the worst relationship I have ever seen between the hospital and our paramedics because of attitudes. And I'm gonna say it's on both sides. I'm not trying to claim it's, it's all on one side. We need to come, we need to resolve this. Whatever it is, we need to resolve it where we're not making <coughs> individual decisions on how to, whether or not we're gonna take a transfer. That needs to be a decision that's made and it's put in black and white for our employees so they're not put on the spot. So there's not words and again I'm saying that it, come, it goes both ways I'm not claiming that we're innocent I, well I'm, I'm innocent but the rest of them no I, really we, we we need to do what's right for the community we need to do what's right for the community uh, I'm not going to address all of the pay stuff if what he had there is key uh, we're in com we're, we're competitive in our pay if, if uh, Texas EMS is paying 65,000 for a paramedic and we're paying that same amount we're, we're paying somebody that does a lot more than that there's a lot more we do than again we're a fire department we're doing stuff all the time these guys have duties daily duties they have to do they have training that they have to perform they can't we don't have the luxury we don't have the budget yes Michael, we are on the on the edge of, of making the budget uh, we don't have the budget to pay people to train on their own you know outside of shift so we have to try to do that during shift there there are occasions where special classes are coming up and we'll do that certainly we have we have some money in the budget for that but not 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 really enough to really do it so these guys we expect them to to train every shift we expect them to exercise every shift because there's in our business there's a lot of people that have heart attacks and die because they don't take care of themselves and then you know you go from from uh, zero to 60 and nothing flat and that puts a lot of stress on the heart so we we require them we don't we don't ask them we don't recommend that they do we we require them to do transfers so just understand I, you know ask the court and ask the hospital that y'all figure it out and quit dragging us through the mud because it's you know this business of social media that's not the place to air stuff out and everybody's got opinion and it's just like a butthole nobody wants to hear about it right can I say that in court? He did. Oh, you did. He did. I'm yeah. sorry. So, so that there's really nothing for us to dispute or debate here. We we would like to take this presentation back. And Brian, don't let me speak to you if you want to get up here and talk. Uh, but and and look at it and see is there something we need to look at. But I can tell you, we we are. There's been salary surveys after salary surveys performed, and we are not. If you go further west they make a lot more money just as a paramedic because they have a harder time getting them and they have a different circumstance where they're able to get more money because they're further away from hospitals it is what it is folks I just ask that you figure it out get us through it and see if I had any notes here what I really want to talk about I don't think um, so yeah it's not we shouldn't be discussing people's people's livelihood we shouldn't be discussing what uh, what we do you know I, I, I I'm sure we could go to the hospital and look at where people are getting paid and not having to perform work all the time and not putting hands on patients right I mean that's th that's the business we're in we got grant writers that are constantly trying to get more money so the taxpayers are not <coughs> burdened with all that you know that's what these clerks he's talking about that's a lot of what they do they also have to handle supplies they also they, there's a lot of stuff that's done we do a b good balancing act with what we have to work with and um, if 
if a decision is for us to do transfers, we'll do what we're, what we're instructed to do because we serve at the pleasure of the court. But uh, know that there is that risk that if we, if we knock, knock out one truck to do transfers, then, then you have a chance. You know, now if we have that incident with two patients, now we got two ambulances and that's all. And that's not really fair to the people that have done the work. Any questions for me? You have any questions at all? I, I would just ask uh, Steve if, uh, like uh, a lot of the uh, accidents, the, the automobile accidents or motorcycle accidents, that sort of thing, a lot of times are serious enough that uh, you're going to call an air ambulance anyway, are you not? That's right. And when we do that, we have trashed our ambulance typically because there's blood everywhere, there's vomit everywhere. Supplies are depleted during that time, so we take that truck out, typically out of, out of service for just as much time as if we were t taking somebody somewhere else or bringing them to the hospital. That's okay, right. and and I, um, this this came through social media, but uh, a statement by someone who supposedly knew that every time there is an accident like that, do you just dispatch two ambulances? That's what I heard. We we uh, often we 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 tell our employees to work safely. Okay. So if they respond, and typically we don't have enough information to know what they're responding to, you know, we're not going to take that much time to, to delay transport or response. We, we'll typically have two ambulances go because <coughs> if that, to help lift, to help do things. Maybe it's worse than what it sounds like. And then once the patient is taken care of and the, the lifting is done, then the second ambulance will come back to the station. But it's also, we tell them to take two ambulances because if they have a second EMS call, which happens often, at the same time, then we want them to respond from there, not, you know, we have a pickup, you know, <coughs> a, a squad, we call a squad. Uh, there was times whenever our folks was going in the, in the squad to do that. Well, and then we get it paged out for, for an ambulance call. What's going to happen? They're going to have to go drive back to the station and get an ambulance. So what makes more sense? I can do a lot more with the ambulance than I can a pickup. I can't do anything that I can do with an ambulance with a pickup. So that's why we have two ambulances following around for safety reasons. Okay. That, that, there's two ambulances going, but there's the rest of the crew is stepping that engine or taking that fire truck, which has all of our rescue equipment. Right. So they they're that same accident scene. So they're and not, you all we're not leaving we're not leaving one ambulance crew behind to right. work in NBC. We're taking and and the two, the two people left in the station. If we do have a, a fire, the ambulance that's out there, the, the people of the station have their gear in the truck and they meet them at the fire. Again. Six people is not a lot of people, folks, when you're talking about taking care of major things. Yeah, and that, that's the other thing that I understood was that you always dispatch uh, a fire engine to an accident. Is that correct? Also? Yes. For, for a couple reasons. One is that it has our jaws of life. The second is... Um, Fuel. It's, it, Fuel. It, no. Spill. Well, no. in I mean, case it catches on fire, fire. but that, 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 it, that engine provides us a lot more protection on that highway than an ambulance does. Okay. So if they can mow through that, that um, engine to get to us on the scene, because we, we block more than just right beside the vehicle we're extricated from. We give them enough buffer to not get run over. <coughs> if, they, if they're able to get to us through that engine, then they've earned it. Okay. I guess the only question, and Michael, you know, jump in here if you need to or whatever. And I think this all boils down to one real question and that was prior to about the beginning of 2018 that you only had two ambulances would that be correct no we've no. had three ambulances for as had long three. as i can remember okay yeah and you have four now we have a backup because as with any vehicle they break a lot and so when we have okay, that, we only carry three licenses so if we have we have an ambulance that has to go into the shop we transfer the license for that ambulance in onto the fourth <coughs> fourth truck, which is you know, it's it's got a lot of wear and tear on it, but you know we we can manage. To, I mean, it it's, it's still legal uh, as far as taking care of patients. Okay, well, yeah, I, I was told during these different meetings, and everything that that you had four. One of them was out of service, and I didn't know, I didn't, and I didn't ask. Was that because it's not running or whatever? But you, I think you just answered that, right? Yeah, we had yeah we had a, a period of what a month that two ambulances were in the, were in the shop, so okay. we were down, we were down to two ambulances. Yeah, okay, so back when you had three only, you didn't have the backup or whatever. Was it the same situation as now? You had one of them 
in reserve? No. We've, no. We let me let me let me give you a little history lesson. Back before back way back in 2007, before 2007, and we were all volunteers. Right. Right. And I was a chief. And it took us an hour to respond to a, somebody falling downstairs and hurting himself. And that's whenever we started down the path that, to get us where we are today. Okay. Because I was not going to be responsible for somebody. I can burn a house down, not feel good about it, but I can live with it. Somebody dies because we can't, we don't respond. I can't live with that. Right. Yeah. So we've helped, we've had three ambulances for a very long time. Okay. Uh, and it's a matter of can we staff? We do have, you know, we have an RN that's that's uh, that's an EMT that that kind of acts in between the the two levels, and we you know we have some some. Uh, part-time paramedics and we we got some good employees that when we have something big happen they show up chalk mountain fire a lot of these guys were working you know they weren't they were didn't get off for a couple of make, couple of weeks you know we can't again we can't schedule our what's going to happen so we we have a system where we have dedicated employees some some don't live in the county but the, a great deal of them do and they show up on their off time during big stuff i don't get paid unless I'm doing chief work. But I show up on my off time to supplement. Whenever they, whenever they, we get strapped, they call me and uh, I, I back it up. Uh, but then I get up in the next morning and go to work, you know, and I'm getting too old for that. <laughs> I, understand. <laughs> I understand. Okay, next question is, in approximately 2018, somewhere early 2018, you wound up with four ambulances that your I think your prior chief maybe went to the commissioner's court asked for the additional ambulance plus the additional personnel and did they did he or the department not present to the court that they would do transfers for the uh, the hospital in order to offset the cost of that by being able to bill for transfers that's not really true. I mean, with, and I, I don't want to state fact because, you know, again, I'm old, and I don't, I don't necessarily remember real well. But it'd be on the, it'd be on the court records. But we bought a new ambulance to replace the one we have in reserve now, because it was getting old. Okay. And we made the decision. Is that right? We made the decision to keep it because we were having a lot of issues with these newer vehicles. Emission stuff, whatever those. Are. I don't know all the times. I'm not that smart, but a lot of stuff was going wrong with them and taking them out of service. So we we did made the decision to keep that fourth ambulance to to back up and knowing that it doesn't get used a lot, but it does get used whenever we have to take one out of service. Now okay. Mark and I, we did. Mark and I went to Cat and we sold her a bill of goods. Let me tell you, we did, and I was right there with him. I mean, okay. About doing all the transfers and being able to take on everything and hire more people and to the best of our ability like I told y'all the other day we did bring on more people and then we wound up losing five people and we didn't live up to the obligations the court didn't do it Mark and I sat there with Kat and <coughs> and promised things that we didn't fulfill well yeah, my, my understanding I don't you know I don't, I don't know the whole story because I was not aware that there was a serious problem until just a a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago or something like that when I got a call from Michael one afternoon uh, desperately trying to get a patient transferred but my understanding was that from about 2018 to 2020 or something like that for a couple of years that the fire department did in fact make the transfers but then COVID hit and I know that that just screwed everybody up and it, it just now that COVID is over I think we agree COVID is over we haven't been wearing masks for some time now it's not over we're just pretending well, we're not pretending it is what, what it ain't. whatever whatever <laughs> oh, but, sorry. I keep but, talking out loud don't I? but it just ended and then when we asked why when we really needed a transfer we got this excuse this excuse this excuse and then we're going okay what's the real story you know, somebody talked to us and explained to us in detail that we can understand why it happened and we haven't gotten that yet so so, so two errors happened back when the agreement occurred. One was promises were made that, that were 
not really prepared to keep. And I was on, I was on the transfer wagon myself. Okay. Well, Steve, was there an interlocal agreement? There was never never anything signed? in writing. That's what I think yeah. that we need to be looking at. Right. There's that, that was out the, an interlocal agreement that we both agree on. It's written, and we both understand. No more, you know, uh, verbal stuff. You know. He said, to, she said. Right. Let's right. let's get it on paper and let's do it right. And, and let's figure out what we need. To and do. I'm for that, you know. That, well, that's kind of what you were saying. And everything, and everything I do now, you know, in business, then it's done in writing because, you know, my words is good. My word is good, but you know, if I get in a bind, I may have to back up a word. If if you got a written agreement, then it, it, and it, by the way, that doesn't really change anything because all written agreements are cancelable with notice, right? But at least it's in writing what you agree to. Well, the the problem is, and, and Trey understands this as well as I do in, in the court. We're not always going to be here. Yeah, our word is good, our handshake is good. Right. But then when you're gone, somebody's going to say, "Well, uh, he may have made that deal, but it, it ain't my deal," right. and so they're not bound by it. So that's that's an issue. That's my point. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's my point. Um, let me ask this. Like I said, I'm, anybody speak up if 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 I'm off base, but when we really really need a transfer we've had a situation just recently where uh, we had someone who who needed to go to fort worth to harris or wherever it was not good weather so we could not get a, a, a an air ambulance and we called and i'm not you know pointing fingers i'm just telling facts uh we called the the uh, fire station and we were told no they're not going to do it and so we we did finally get uh, Texas EMS, but there was that delay for probably an hour. Cat probably knows of how long it was, and I don't know whether that transfer that patient uh, wound up with a good outcome or not. But when when it did not, when when we need it, we need it, and we've gotten to the point where we're told no, regardless of what circumstances are. If we say we can't get an air ambulance because there's a storm. There's, you know, it's it's the, the weather or are they're not available. We need to get this person out quick. And if you've got an ambulance or two sitting at the fire station, literally blocks from the hospital, why should we have to wait 30 minutes to an hour or more to get somebody out and then they don't make it? So, you know, and y'all, I know y'all can't make the decision right here. I'm just throwing it out as as a question. Can't we at least do something like that if it really is serious? And we don't again we don't need to be second guessed we don't have we don't need someone that's an emt or a paramedic overriding an md or a I, do i want to say i can't be quiet go ahead i want to say one more thing and i'm not disagreeing with you at all ron in fact i'm agreeing totally with you if it's an emergency situation if it's a god forbid a life or death situation we need to get that person where they need to be if to the best of our ability if we've got trucks sitting there we need to we need to go with it. With that said, we, you know, we depend upon the professionalism and the and the uh, the knowledge of the doctor to call it an emergency. So, you know, if it's called in to us as an emergency by that professional, I feel like that's what it is, and that needs to be handled as such. Um, but it's, it, I've also been told there's been times where it's been called in, and it, and I'm not telling my guys to second guess doctors at all because that's that that won't that doesn't need to happen okay first and foremost but it needs to be an emergency situation in my opinion and we cannot in my opinion if we're available deny that that's my thought we cannot and, and you're right and, and again it, go, it goes back to what i said in the beginning you guys need to figure this out because our folks I, I don't like putting them in a position where they have to make a decision and unfortunately, it's history, but there was some manipulation of paperwork done uh, that caused them to take transfers or, or whatever. And paperwork changed. And I don't have any facts, I don't have any evidence, but paperwork changed in order to make it fit the criteria. So we don't need to be in that business. We don't that, need to be in the business. We, the, we, need a, we need a transfer service that will satisfy your level your level one trauma and that will make guarantee you a truck here whenever uh, the chief was talking about needing nine people that's the, to guarantee 
that you have a truck there. Maybe there's a compromise in between. I think some, I think the hospital should have some skin in the game, though. Personally, again, I'm trying to not be a politician because I don't want to be. I don't even like politicians. Come on now, you run for job. Oh, come on now. No, um, so so, but it, it's it, we sh we should not have our folks put in in that position. We need we need to be instructed on what we need to do, and we, and we'll take a you know write a policy that will fit that. The medical director will buy into it, and so we're all. We're all on the same page. Well, I, go ahead. I, I'd just like to ask Michael to clarify something here for everyone. What's the procedure when we look at transferring a patient? If it's an ER transfer, the ER doctor has determined that that patient needs to go to a higher level of care. And at that point, he has contacted the doctor at a higher level of care that has accepted that patient that has agreed that, that patient needs to go to a higher level of care. So therefore, the transfer, they can't go by private car, they have to go by ambulance at that point. So so you have two doctors saying, hey, yes, this person needs to be, needs to be transferred to a higher level of care. So, but it doesn't necessarily make it emergent. So let's throw that word out there so everybody gets to chew on a little bit. It doesn't make it emergent. It might not make it life-threatening. Right. It, Maybe they have a procedure they're going to have done tomorrow. That's fine. Right. And so that's why we're saying that, you know, that, that for well, us to be in the... Steve, that's not fair. No, I'm not. I'm because, not because when we transfer somebody, you don't know when that procedure is going to happen. I, I was it only... It might not happen until tomorrow, but the transferring physician doesn't have any control over what happens when that patient gets to the receiving hospital. Right. So, I, my, I was only making the point that they, they were putting it all in one basket, right? That so was COVID, that was a little different. Right, right. But I'm just right. saying uh, I mean, that's that's why I'm saying we don't need to we don't need to be in the decision making business. Understand, right. yeah. but when you cite an example like that that was during COVID, that was a very different situation that's not occurring today. That's not really apples to apples, and and um, you know one of the problems is how do we define emergency? Right. Right. If you have a condition or a disease or a disorder or an injury that is potentially life or limb threatening, Medicare calls that an emergency. Right. So, you know, it doesn't need to be in the next hour, three hours, six hours, 12 hours. Right. There isn't a timeline on it that I've ever found in any of Medicare's guidelines. They, they leave that wide open. And so that's one of our, and, and I, I, I see both sides. I, I wear too many hats and it's very challenging. The problem is in my heart as a physician, the patient should come first. And too often in this debate over the last few years, the patient hasn't come first. And that's why these boards have to get this figured out. Right. The and patient has to come first. And that's, that's why I said, I was only clarifying that there's a whole lot of different kind of transfers. Right. I was not trying to. It's, it's different when yeah. you're picking somebody up at a nursing home right. and taking right. them for their EGD and bringing them back. Yes. Yeah. Not an ambulance transfer. Uh, so I just I just ask that we figure out how to do this where we're not in the we're not we're not in the business of making decisions on whether or not we're going to transfer a patient um, and. Like I say, there's we got to figure out financially how to make it work and and logistically how to make it work. Again, I, I'm in. I've been in for 36 years, and um, but I would like to walk away someday and feel good about the system. Right? I don't feel good about the system. I have yes, sir. Another question. Do I understand you to say that on your shift, okay, you're going to only have five people per shift? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. okay. But it takes, it for for an engine company to, to go to a structure fire, you should have five people. At least one person t that follows in an ambulance. Yeah. But we operate different than that. We, we they, they, they operate on a wing and prayer, prayer sometimes whenever we have multiple calls and they're depending on volunteers. So we have a system to check and balance to, to see, so they can see who, what, what volunteers they have coming. But it's not a guarantee. That's the problem. It's not a guarantee. And it's becoming harder and harder. But I got some really, really dedicated guys. I got a guy that wears a, a, a law enforcement office 
officer uniform and then takes that off and puts the fire department uniform on. He was at Chalk, Chalk Mountain Fire in one or the two capacities for at least 18 hours of that time. So we got some good people and, and, we, and we've added some and, we, and we're still looking around, you know. Uh, anybody here want to volunteer? The number, no, I'm sorry. Uh, but we do. We 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 want to do what's best for the community, and we want to we want to be good stewards of what the county commissioners court is entrusting us with. Um, looking at those numbers, I I can see how somebody could spin that around and make it look like somebody's getting paid too much money. But that's not really the issue. It, they're not, by the way, compared to other agencies. But that's not really the issue. The issue is how do we get to the place where you guys. The hospital, the patients, let's forget about the hospital, the patients have a vehicle that will transport them guaranteed. That's where we need to be, right? And um, I don't know how to get there, but I asked that y'all figure it out. I'll and I should tell out. the public before we started, after we get through debate and discussion and argument or whatever, then we'll have the public comments. Sorry, I should have said that up front, but I forgot. I guess I have a couple of questions. Um, how long does it usually take to transfer a patient uh, to and from? We, it's, we average about three hours, you know, unless you're going to Cleveland or Granbury, something like that. Could you have some kind of special protocol into place where you let your volunteers know that, hey, we've got a transfer going on, maybe have an all-hands-on-deck kind of reaction, just so you kind of get the feel of where you stand as a department? We have that system. We, we have, a, we have a, a system that they get a, a notification on their phone that, that, they're, that they're doing something, whatever it is. Okay. So we have a system. But again, I, I would love to be able to tell all my volunteers, you're going to be scheduled for this time, and, and if you don't like it, you can hit the road. Because, but if I do that, then I don't have any volunteers left. You know, They, they give it their time, and they, and, they, and they give a lot of time. Um, but to be able to say 100% we're good, you know, and and to do that and then try to fill the fill the gap and wait on that, and we've already gone past that 30 minutes also, so it it really doesn't resolve anything. We we do have it. We we look at it. You know, I I spend a lot of waking hours looking at looking at and thinking about how can we do better. You know, but the fact is we we have what we have, and it's it's a it's a limited staff for the only fire department in Somerville County. Hood County has nine? Nine volunteers. Yeah, and, and they have a, a EMS department, a company that just started, just added their fifth truck, has five trucks. That's 10 people on, on duty, plus uh, an administrator and a QA person. And you know, these people are not making ambulance calls, but they're back up for those ambulances. Uh, the people we have that are admin that are are certified they're backup for emergencies but if you take all your backup out you have you don't have a backup and you're just stuck Michael asked the question the other day and I didn't have the answer how many times do we actually go to level zero I said I see it on my phone but I can't give you exact number I believe it's maybe once or twice a month but maybe I over exaggerated y'all I know we've we've done it we I can recall just off the top of my head twice this month because I know I see it each time but he asked me about how many times in a year, and I, I couldn't answer that. We've had two different cases where we had two motorcycle wrecks at the same time this month. Right. Uh, and then a, a medical emergency at somebody's house in town at the same time. Right. Uh, do you, uh, do you call, sorry. go ahead, Max. Do you call for mutual aid? I'll think what I was. Mutual aid? Mutual aid, yes. Yes. Do you we call do. for them? And, how often would you do that? Like monthly, or six months, or three months? We 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 try to minimize that because we we were doing it a lot during COVID and, and a lot uh, in the last couple of years, and it got to where they were never available. You know, because you you call me and to come and stand by, and and I never do anything enough times, and I figure out how to not to do it anymore. It's it's just human nature. Uh, but we do have we do have a good relationship with Texas MS, and they do help us out. Uh, and you know, and, and when we can, we help them out. We just don't have the we don't have the ability to back other counties up like they do us because we're alone. We're on an island, with just us. We're we're 20 minutes from our help. 
Steve, for folks that are out in the audience or whatnot that may not understand the levels you're talking about, explain the levels, what you're talking about, level zero and whatnot. So, so yeah, so level, level zero, we have six people on, shi on shift. If they get to the point where they are, um, they, they have expended those six people and there's no reserve, then that we go to level zero. That tells the volunteers that, hey, I need to start you know, getting ready and, and be prepared to, to respond. I'd hope you guys are already ready to respond, but but you know, it it gives us a heads up that that they are are strapped because you know we're in a system now where, to be honest, you know I I for the for my first 20 years of of, of service, I was in the position where we, volunteers were it. I was it. I spent a lot of time uh, making endless calls in the middle of the night, and and I, I enjoy not having to get up and and our employees having to, you know, be up in, in the middle of the night and may not have to give up. Now, sometimes I get woke up anyway because I forget to turn my pager down to the point where it doesn't wake me, but but I do because I, if we have something big, I still got to get them go, you know. Six is not enough. Six people are, is not enough to handle any kind of significant emergency. It's not. It's absolutely not. A structure fire, you try to handle it with six people, it's the, 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 the rules require you got an engineer, you got two people that go in, you got two people that go out, and you have somebody in command. There you go. You're, you're spent. That's all six. So anything past that, we have to be dependent on the volunteers to show up. And, and by the way, you know, uh, wearing an air pack and wearing heavy gear and doing heavy work, they don't last very long. Uh, some of them try, I think. but. Uh, we don't let them get to the point where they're going to have a heart attack. So, you know, we got to have we got to have backup. Was that sufficient? Do you have anything, to old Brian, that you want to add or discuss? Or? <coughs> yeah. I think at the base of this, we've tried to explain this that our staffing needs have increased since 2018, and we're just trying to keep up, stay ahead of the curve. And we, we, we've got one of the, probably the strongest, best service we've ever provided that I can remember. And we've got dedicated employees and volunteers, good morale. And we're just trying to stay on this curve, this growth curve that we see coming. And we just do not have the resources to do that and maintain the service of transfers full time. Yeah, and, and, and to the point of, you know, we're, we're under 10,000 people in the county, but we could double that easily with the tourism at any given time. So it's hard to say how many we how many we're really serving because a lot of wrecks we work on the highway is not county residents. Between March and October, we we expanded 1.5 to 2 million. So it passed through our gates, through our uh, population, county, whatever you want to say. Yeah, See, we county limits. From March, you can't even, there you go. From March 1st, October 1st, yeah. we run about 1.5 to me. Well, anything else for Steve yeah, or Brian I, I at all? I would like to say something. You, yes, you mentioned a little while ago that there was some en enmity between the two departments. And I, I would just like to point out that we have something in common here. None of us want to lose a patient on our watch. Yes, ma'am. And that's that's where we're coming from, too. Yes, ma'am. We're concerned about Hood County have, taking half an hour to get here when we've got a patient that critically needs to be transferred to Fort Worth or wherever. Uh, we don't know what else we can do about that. Yes, ma'am. It's the same as we can't schedule 911 calls. You know, we can't we can't predict when we're going to be at level zero. Right. So it's, it's I, I'm asking for help. I'm not, I, I'm not disputing anything y'all said. Yeah, Steve, I agree with, uh, I was going to say something earlier and somebody else needed to speak up and I kind of forgot about it. Um, I agree with you that nobody, uh, whether it's an MD or whoever, needs to be changing paperwork to make something fit. That's wrong. Maybe we can work on getting that changed or, or whatever. Try to make it does not happen again. But at the same time, when we can't get an air ambulance because we need somebody out quick, we don't need the uh, fire department sitting there with an ambulance available and saying no no matter what and that's what it's gotten to i agree that's got an end that's that that's, has an end folks. I, I think i said already we i, I don't want anymore. i don't want our people making the decision <clears throat> and i've said this to people before there's very few things that i will not do to protect our hospital just about 
just about cheat or steal or whatever to protect this hospital this and that includes record. that includes protecting the patients obviously yes so uh, if we have to do something I'm on board with doing whatever we have to do to make sure that we've got transport for those people who need it and if that means us getting a, an ambulance of our own or whatever I'm willing to look at that and I don't know what the other board will do but we've, we've got to fix this this can't stay the way it is and you've heard me say you know there, maybe there's a compromise maybe <coughs> We share the burden, you know. I mean, I, I don't think anything should be left unthought and unsaid to, to resolve this, but it has to be resolved. We cannot continue down this road. I got something to say. Steve, yes, I, do too. I have, uh, I just want to look forward to collaboration between the two of us, and I think yes, it will work great. Our hospital's doing a fantastic job. You are doing good work for Somerville County, and we want Somerville County to be at one. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, pooey. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. Just say what she said. <laughs> Don't Don't a little bit extra. Okay. I've got three nephews that are absolutely first-class young men. They're all firemen. They're all EMTs. They all work in California. When this started kind of boiling up, because I know nothing about you know, the, the other side of it, I went over and asked Wade to, to take a little bit of time, and he's kind enough to introduce me to Judge Chambers. And we talked, and I learned an awful lot about it, but it still comes back down. And thank you guys for taking that time. But the bottom line is, we're all on the same side. When, and I know everybody's got two sides of this, but when we're hearing that uh, in the ambulance, people are hearing bad things about the hospital, they're and vice versa. Fair enough. Yes, sir. And that's got to stop. Yes, sir. We can't have that sort of uh, argument going on. All of we, all of us, need to take a step back, <coughs> kind of think about what we're saying and what we're doing. This can be resolved. It can be resolved, maybe with a little bit extra money. But all this argument back and forth needs to stop. Because the bottom line is, if somebody dies in our ER, that's on all of us. Yes, sir. We can't have that. And it's, that's bad enough, but the legal consequences of that could be devastating to the county. And we need to try harder and with a better attitude, both sides. But it needs to start now. I agree. And that's, that's what I've said. I hope y'all didn't hear anything different than that. I won't, I won't fix it. Fair enough. And I won't fix it now. Last thing, is yes, there an age limit to be a volunteer fireman? I thought you were going to tell me how handsome I was. Dang it. Uh, yes, ma'am, 18. I mean, on the other side. <laughs> oh! No, no. I'm, I'm 60 and I ain't, I ain't done. And where's Michael at? How old are you, Michael? I'm in my 70s. You're not going to tell us how old you are? Okay. Uh, so, no. There, there's something that everybody can do. Um, you know, you may not be able to go in and fight a fire but you may be able to hold somebody's hand whenever they've lost a loved one you know there's all, all kinds of opportunities for sure anything else for Steve at all Brian at all all right well, let's talk uh, let's talk finances right quick and here again this is Danny talking this is not the court talking all right last year in the budget when we went through what we went through, you know, we tried to readjust many different, and a lot of this is for the public so they'll understand also where we're at, okay, and for the whole board. We tried to adjust as many departments as we could with the pay raises, pay grades, okay, <coughs> trying to get... They're not here. The, Uh-oh, that's unusual. Can you hear me now? I usually talk so loud everybody can hear me. Okay. All right, anyhow, what we're saying was, during last year's budget cycle, which we're getting ready to start that in May or June, we, you know, we tried to reallocate many different regroup, different uh, departments, elected officials, department heads, uh, all the way to the sheriff's department, fire department, to get hopefully salaries in line, okay? Our insurances went up 14% last year, and then on top of that realignment, we did 5% for everybody. So 
where that put us last year for the first time in nine years was it put us $776,317 deficit budget, okay? Now, we agreed to do that this year, but as you can see, it's unsustainable because with the legislators, we can only go 3.5% on what we can income off property taxes and ad valorem taxes. So sales tax, hopefully, will help us uh, on many different issues because, you know, that can be used for the sheriff's department, fire department, first, things like that. We already used some of it. We are. We yeah, Sheriff's Department, we've used some. Fire Department, I think it's 180000 right. I think. Uh, but I could be wrong. And the reason I get here is whatever our solution is going to be and however we work this out, we all live off the same taxpayers. You all have the same taxpayers. We have the same taxpayers. So however we look at this and decide how we can try to alleviate this pain and this problem, right now, the current budget, and Michael, maybe you can prove me wrong on this as we work our way through it. You know, what we currently have, we're tapped out. It's money-wise, okay? Maybe you think our services are not being met to 100%. That's something we've got to look at, all right? As a, as a court, as a group, as discussions, but, and here again, I'm not speaking for the court, but you know, I'm wide open to any ideas, whether it be equipment, whether it be manpower, whether it be money, I don't know. I figure there's a solution there, but I don't know at this point what it is, okay? I'm not saying we can't do it, but right now I don't, I don't see it happening tomorrow, let's put it that way. Does that make sense? And by no means, I'm not trying to upset anybody in either direction. It's just when it comes down to finances and economics, and if we can't do it what we currently have, then we'll have trouble figuring out how we move forward. Comment? I see it. I see the wheels turning. On Come the on. Last page. Come on. I item number two on the last page, or on the last screen. Yep. I don't have that, but I'll take your word for it. I trust you, Max. $279,137. Yes. yes. That's what lost revenue that you could be making. If That's what I'm told is lost revenue. I don't have any proof of that being lost revenue. I'm run. told that yeah. is supposedly lost revenue. Right. If we had the manpower to run them, then that's lost revenue. If I don't have the manpower, like what Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Kathy pointed out the other day, you're paying your manpower anyhow, no matter what. That is true, but the manpower is sitting there to do many other jobs. So that is lost I know, if I were able to do it. With an average of one point calls, 1.9 calls per what we can say per day. Per day. Per day. Okay. And I think that's debatable too, Max, but we'd have to dig into our numbers. I was trying not to go down that path and argue that, but I'm, I'm willing to I argue those that. those are your numbers. That's, right. That's what we got off the, from November through uh, February, your numbers. So Michael? 2021, fire department ran 1,360 total calls. 700, over 730 of those were EMS calls. Over 100 of those, 100 of those were vehicle accidents. 203 were transfers, and another 324 were fire calls, rescue calls, hazmat calls, fire alarms, lift assists, etc. So that was 2021. Correct. And you weren't making any runs for us, though, were you? That was including 203 transfers from the hospital. Correct. Okay. Well, if we could do it then, why can't we do it now? Yeah. Because our between 2021 and 2022. We had two or three vacancies and then we lost five people in three weeks because they're going to other places for more money. That's documented and provable. Okay. Yeah. So that's why uh, in 2022, in February, we, we, I emailed the hospital, Michael, Kat, and Dr. Boston after talking with the court and let them know that we, we cannot continue to do these transfers because we were critically low staffing at that point. And we still left some emergent stuff on on the table that we would try to we would do those the best we could. And what we did in April and May of twenty two is we tried to realign the best we could. We froze what, three or five three, positions. Three. And we took those salaries and poured them back into our current group to keep them active and then start building staff back up. 
when we currently got back to full staff was when? First part of 2023. I don't know when we actually finally February, got there. March. February, March -ish, so February. Okay, the question would be if you had the budget and you were paying those five individuals and they left for whatever reason, the budget was still there and you restaffed to the to that original level, correct? But it took us about eight months to get there. Okay, so, but the, the, the point is... Right now we're back to that level, yes. Okay. And you're wondering right now why we can't do it. But That's yeah, the, the last... Why not? In 2021, we generated less than $200,000 with our transfer service. Question. That, that was how much you... one transfer truck. That was two to three transfer trucks running to make to keep... Because it was COVID we were running non-stop trying and that's another reason we we kept the fourth truck as a reserve because we're just running the wheels off these trucks our guys are crossing county lines while one's going out somewhere else uh, so even even then we weren't you know at the peak of our transfers we generated less than two hundred thousand dollars in revenue a lot of that can be attributed to, to the non-collection practice and that's not a you thing that's a that's a court thing, yeah. But, I mean, that's I yeah. That's not their fault. And you transfer me, you're not going to get paid a dime for, if you don't go after the patient for that amount. You're not going to get paid anything for that, so you're losing. Yeah, a lot but, of those transfers weren't worth the time they weren't just necessarily from the exactly. hospital. They were. I mean, yeah. they're they knew we were at zero too because we couldn't get them out, and so they were taking them to other places because if they needed respiratory or cardiac or something. We didn't have, we no, didn't that's not that's not including from the home. That's those are still generated as 911 calls. Should we consider those 911 calls. On the flip side, our 911 revenue was almost 300,000. We total billed 376,000 during 2021 for transfers. Michael, so we left 176 on the table. Michael, isn't there an additional source of income that came up 1115 or something like that that could be? There's the capability to do EMS can participate in the 1115 waiver. I, I don't. On the EMS, I don't know how much money. I mean, for us, it's about 1.2 to 1.4 million dollars a year that we get for a compensated care uh, that we actually an accounting firm does most of the paperwork for. We provide the paperwork. But you're suggesting that the fire department could yeah, get some of this money? The 1115. Also, your charity care. You can run it off the charity. Yeah, charity care. The last time, last time we got any funding back from them, it was twenty-three thousand dollars. What I said earlier, I kind of want to repeat. So forgive me. Um, no. When it's a, or don't forgive me either way. Uh, when it's an emergency, absolutely. When it's a transfer situation, that's what we've got to work out, I think, between all of us, and we'll all agree to that. My, and this is just Jeff talking, my concern is us being in the billing business. Um, you know, we're talking about leaving money on the table and, and this and that. So I'm going to throw an idea out there. Y'all can shoot it down, y'all can shoot it down, whatever. But I'm going to throw an idea out there that if the EMS does a transfer, then the hospital's billed for it and the hospital collects. It's just a thought. Maybe it won't work. Maybe it will. Uh, I, I'm not trying to, to, to accuse anybody or, or, or pass the buck, per se, but is that doable? No, it, no it's not compliant. You, you can't do... Now, the, the billing service that you currently have, that is the I would assume all you need to let them know is that you want them to collect after insurance, and they will do that for you. They, they charge a percentage. But the hospital can't bill for a transfer that y'all that's ordered no, by the hospital. It's under y'all's license. The okay. The transfer is under under the EMS license. Right. Okay. And again, I didn't know, so that's why I threw it out there. 